Hope my screen is visible. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. So, hi, uh, hope you all are doing very well this uh, Saturday evening. I welcome you all to the very introductory session of Study Need Assess, uh, where we will have a brief introduction regarding what is Need Assess, what is the exam all about, and regarding Study Need Assess, and a short discussion on the topic of endometrial cancer and postmenopausal bleeding. So perfection is not attainable, but if we chase perfection, we can certainly catch excellence. With this quote in mind, we'll begin our session today. So what are we going to do in this session? Uh, I'll give you a brief overview of NEAT assess. What is it all about? What the exam is, the pattern is all about, what will you uh, expect after you get a result in this exam? And who are we at Study Need Assess? Why you should join Study Need Assess? And what are we going to do in Study Need Assess? People are still joining. Okay, anyways, it's uh, 8.15. We had a session at eight o'clock. So, and I'll give you uh, some brief introduction regarding postmenopausal bleeding and endometrial cancer. So, neat super speciality is uh, sorry, just yes. So, neat super speciality is the uh, super speciality exam for admission to super speciality courses in various streams. Uh, in ops and gyne, uh, mainly we have two streams that is for which are eligible for need super speciality. One is the gynecologic oncology and the other is the reproductive medicine. So here after need super speciality, you can do either a DM or an MCH course or a DRNB super speciality course. So uh, uh, around all the medical uh, colleges are included in the need super speciality exam, bearing a few like the AIMS New Delhi and Zipmar Pondicherry. They have their separate exams. AIMS conducts its separate exams for reproductive medicine and gynae oncology courses twice a year. And Zipmar has it once a year. And there are some FET course, uh, FET exam is also there for the fellowship courses in high risk obstetrics and for reproductive medicine, which are two year courses basically. And uh, if you qualify in the need super speciality, it is, uh, am I not audible? Hello? Audible ma'am. Okay, so I don't know. Uh, I'm audible Dr. Suvanjan. Can you hear me? Can you check your network? Yeah, please try and rejoin. So I was, as I was talking regarding the need super speciality exam. So this is the exam which you need to qualify to get entry into your gynae oncology or reproductive medicine. So these are two streams where you can, after you can get entry into after qualifying for this exam. So as we all know regarding the timeline, the uh, forms are already out. And I'm sure you all have already applied for the forms and you should apply it uh, as soon as possible because accordingly you get the, your center preferences and it's always a good habit to apply the forms as soon as possible so that you do not have all this last minute rushes and all, okay? So basically the form is simple where you need to apply, you need to give your photographs and your thumb impressions, signatures, etc. It's very much the same as it was earlier also. And you have your exam on the 1st of September and it is in the morning session for the Ops and Gynae uh, residents. 
So now coming to the pattern of neat super speciality, uh, this time they have revised the pattern and we have a total number of questions will be 150. Earlier it was 100 questions, but this time it is around 150 questions and it is to be attempted in a span of around two and a half hours duration. So it is 150 questions in 150 minutes. That is one minute, hardly one minute per question. So you have to be quit, quick, okay? So this has this can be a bit of a rushed paper so you have to keep an idea of the time and uh, 150 questions in 150 minutes is going to be a tough one okay so the question paper will now consist of questions from the general or the basic component of the primer feeder primary feeder broad speciality this is something they have changed uh, from this session onwards. So it is going to be the primary feeder broad speciality subject and from all the subspeciality or systems or component of that primary feeder broad speciality subject. And another important thing which they have mentioned in the prospectus is that all the 150 questions would be from the curriculum of the postgraduate exit level. Okay, this is very important. It is uh, to be from the postgraduate exit level of the primary feeder broad speciality subject. So, what are we to expect? Uh, what are we to expect in this neat super speciality exam? So, earlier the paper was uh, when I gave my neat super speciality, it was one hundred and fifty questions. We had around sixty percent of the weightage was given to the subspeciality. Okay, that is gynae, onco, and repromet, both the subspecialities combined together. And 40 questions were from the, uh, from the broad speciality, that is ob gyne. But this time they have modified. The total number of questions is 150. So, and which has to be completed within two and a half hours. Earlier we had 100 questions, that was also two and a half hours. So we had plenty of time, but this time this is going to be a rushed one. 150 questions in 150 minutes and all of them will be from the curriculum of the postgraduate exit level. So this time you can expect a change in the question pattern. However, please uh, be assured that the questions will be asked from the subspeciality. Okay, it will not be only simply OPS and gynae. Yes, OPS and gynae will have weightage, but trust me, they will be incorporating a good amount of questions from gynae onco as well as reproductive medicine. You can expect around, maybe around 50% uh, of the questions, around 75 questions or uh, maybe around 40 questions from gynae onco, 40 questions from Repromed, and the rest of the 60 questions will be from Ops and gynae. So that makes hardly around 30 questions from obstetrics and 30 questions from gynecology. So basically, if you look at gynae from a broader angle, it basically consists of gynae onco, Repromed, and urogynecology and minimal invasive surgery, and uh, some endocrinology part. Okay, so the endocrinology part basically comes to the reproductive medicine part. So it is included within reproductive medicine. Then you have that gyne onco. So gynecology is the basically, it is divided. So you can expect roughly around 40 questions from gyne onco, 40 questions from reproductive medicine and the rest of the 60 questions from OPS and gynae. So though they have mentioned that it will be from the postgraduate exit level, please be prepared for, uh, for your guy, specialized gynae onco and specialized reproductive medicine questions. Because see, in uh, the, uh, the question is being set by premier institutes like uh, Tata Memorial or AIMS, okay, where these institutes have their uh, subspeciality trainees. Okay, so they have started the subspeciality program in reproductive medicine and gynae onco. Even Safdarjang in Delhi, they have started gynae onco. So please be assured that you will get a good number of questions from gynae onco and reproductive med. It will, though it will be, maybe the standard will be at a broad speciality level or a PG exit level, but still you must be well prepared with both the uh, with both the gynae onco as well as the reproductive medicine part. You must be well prepared because in OPS and gynae, the main crux of the story is 
the number of seats okay so uh, because it is going to be 150 questions in 150 minutes duration so you can expect one liners basically they will be one liner or two liner questions May, uh, mostly it will be one liner questions and hardly one or two questions maybe two or three liner questions okay so as far as the prediction goes, mostly the questions will be one liner. Otherwise, it will be very hard to attempt 150 questions within a span of 150 minutes. OK, so see uh, the other uh, thing, the other catch regarding this neat super speciality exam is neat super speciality has always been a very basic exam. Trust me, the questions are very simple, very basic, but the main catch in uh, qualifying NEET assess is the competitiveness of the exam, okay? It is a highly competitive exam. Though, you see, uh, if you see, if you have a look at the marks, uh, the marks are very, uh, very well, very closely placed, okay? Even with a, uh, with a, a difference in marks, maybe one mark, there will be around 10 ranks placed with one mark. Okay, so last year when uh, last but uh, previous one year when we had a rank, so with the similar rank uh, of the similar mark, we had three or four candidates with the similar marking. When you have a similar mark, then uh, they take into account your negative marking, how many questions you have uh, missed and how many questions you have attempted right. And then at the end, they see the age criteria. Okay. So need super speciality is a very competitive exam. Though the questions are very easy, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot lose out on this very simple questions. Okay. You cannot miss out on questions because it is highly competitive and the mark it is a very mark fetching exam uh, maybe the highest scorer that is rank one uh, he or she will have a uh, if the total uh, exam will be 150 so we had a question we had the exam in 400 it was 100 questions and 400 and the uh, who had the top rank that is the neat assess rank one she had a rank of around she had a marks of around 350 Okay, so 350, that means, uh, uh, well, about, uh, she had answered around 90 questions, 90 odd questions, right? And maybe around 10 questions were wrong for which she had got a negative marking of 10. Okay, so that is a, this is a very high scoring exam. So the crux of the story is you have to be very well prepared and you cannot miss out on the simple and easy questions, which others could have attempted because this is a highly competitive exam. So this is the crux of the very crux of need assess. You cannot miss out on uh, important questions or on silly questions, and you can expect very basic questions, and you have to be very wary of the time. Okay, so two and a half hours and 150 questions, you have to keep in mind the time factor as well during this exam, for this exam, okay? Hope I'm clear regarding the pattern of the neat assess exam. Now coming to study neat assess. So study neat assess, this is a new course which we have started and we have a robust prior experience in mentoring DRNB, uh, MD, MS, Ops Gyne students for Royal College examination with an incomparable success. We have a success rate of around 90% and 100% in part three and part two, and as well as part one MRCOG exams. Last year, this year, recently, we had a 100% success rate in our MRCOG part three exam. I am a, a mentor at MRCOG part three also. And we have a dedicated team of gyne subspeciality mentors with success in NEET SS super speciality. We have appeared the exam and we know how, how difficult it is and how strenuous it is and what support you do require while giving this exam. So we have an attentive support system with extensive preparation and resources. And we have innovative academic uh, approaches in the exam and we have a 24 7 support group where you can ask us doubts and we have an extensive support in the it group so what is our course structure
So our course structure is basically uh, we'll be doing six classes in our span of two weeks because you have around uh, seven plus 31. That is around 38 days to the exam. And trust me, trust me 38 day, days for need assess ob -GYN, it is a doable exam. Trust me, it is a doable exam. If you can manage to take a break from your work, that's very good. Even if you are unable to take a break from your work and if you can manage around say about six hours of studying after you come from your job, uh, maybe at, uh, you start around five o'clock in the evening and sit for around 12 o'clock in the night and study even seven hours of study for 10 days and the rest 15 days you can take a leave from your work that will do. You have to know what you need to read before need tests. There is a definite pattern of the questions and there is a definite pattern and definite modules from which the questions are asked repeatedly. Okay, so it is a doable exam and though it is highly competitive, but the questions are, trust me, they are very simple. The questions are very simple and very easy. And if the only thing, the only trick to the exam is getting the questions all the questions right and being clear in your basic concepts your basics needs to be clear they just want to know whether uh, your basics are clear okay so uh, as they have already mentioned it is based on a pg exit level so your basics need to be clear and the topics are mostly repeated Okay, I will come to the topics later on. What are the most commonly asked topics in the need assess exam? So we'll be providing you uh, this interactive lectures. That is, we'll be providing you around six classes in a span of two weeks because uh, it's already, uh, you have 39 days to the exam. So, so one will be an introductory class and uh, in each class we'll be covering one module so one class will be from the reproductive medicine other class will be on gynae oncology one will be on obstetrics and the other class will be on gynecology so these are the four classes and at the end we will ha be having a class on the exam tested questions that is your past two years recalls and the exam tested MCQs and the frequently asked exam tested topics in the need assess exam. So we will be having daily activity sessions where we will be posting daily questions, daily questions which has been given from the modules which are already tested in the exam. We will be sharing with you flashcards on the important topics or on the important topics which are every time asked in the DTSS exam, we'll be having intensive hour sessions where we will be posting questions and you will be answering so that you get a, uh, you get uh, used to this uh, habit of reading questions and answering within a span of one minute because you have a strict time schedule of 150 questions in 150 minutes and you should be prepared for that. There will be a dedicated 24-7 instant message support group, as I already told. Uh, there will be a telegram group. There will be a study medic uh, app group. So both of that you will be getting and where uh, we'll be giving you instant support. There will be recorded sessions in case you are unable to attend a live session. You can go through the recording, but I would urge every one of you to please try and attend the live because a live session Whatever enters into your ear, it directly goes into your brain. And trust me, 39 days is more than enough for a need assess. You should, uh, you should read smartly. Okay, reading smart is more important in cracking an exam rather than uh, going through the whole of your Williams book and Berek, Novak and everything. Okay, so you should know from where the topics are being constantly asked and you should read the topic and you should know what questions are being asked and what they want to know from you. Okay, so this is where we come in and we help you guys. So we'll be providing you with all India mock tests, which will be given free of uh, cost for our uh, for the students who enroll in our course. There will be four all India mock tests where we will be giving you an all India ranking and there will be exam tested uh, MCQ session, as I already told you, and we will be uh, concentrating on those modules. So among the resources, we have a uh, 
extensive uh, library resource and we have all the textbooks, Beric and Hacker, Williams, Williams Guyanese, Peroff, Beric and Novak, Arias, Devita, everything. Okay. So however, uh, I don't think so within this 39 days period of time, you need to go through these textbooks because whatever the essence of this textbooks will be providing you with the important things. Okay. But however, if you do want to consult, you can anytime open up the library and go through these textbooks. The library also does complain, uh, contain many of the articles mostly based on the trials or the recent trials from which you can be asked uh, questions. They can give you exam, they can give you questions regarding some recent updates or some recent upcoming things on reproductive medicine and uh, uh, and gynae oncology and as I told you this is a highly competitive exam and even a single mark will value whether you get a seat in your reproductive medicine or gynae onco so even a single question even if you know a single uh, recent update that is going to be very important and going to be a deciding factor on whether you're going to get a rank or getting a seat because the seats are very few okay so the seats are hardly around 20 odd seats in gyne onco and this year they have increased the seats in reproductive medicine they have opened up a few drnb institutes of reproductive medicine so hardly there are around roughly around 30 seats 30 odd seats so this is a highly competitive exam so in our library, we do have these guidelines on FIGO, ASHRAE, ASRM, ACOG, and RCOG, and a comprehensive MCQ bank, which you can practice the questions, okay? So you need to practice the questions again and again. Practicing is the key. Every day, you must make it a habit. 39 days to go for the before the exam, you have to do at least 100 MCQs. We are posting daily MCQs in our study medic app. You can go through them. I am posting deliberately big uh, lengthy questions so that you have a habit. Even if the questions come lengthier, you have a habit of reading the questions and answering the options within a span of one minute. Try to do it within a span of one minute because 150 questions in 150 minutes isn't going to be easy. Okay, so please try and attempt those questions and go through the explanations. I usually provide with a detailed explanation so that the concept revolving around the question is also clear for you guys. Okay, so among the oncology, we'll be covering uh, pre-invasive lesions of the cervix, cancer cervix, epithelial ovarian and non-epithelial ovarian tumors, endometrial hyperplasia, endometrial cancer and uterine sarcoma, GTN, carcinoma vulva and vagina, cancer in pregnancy, fertility sparing approach, chemotherapy, basics, principles of radiation therapy. These are some of the things which is uh, frequently asked. Some basic questions are asked regarding chemotherapy and radiation therapy, and it is always hard to go through the whole of Barrack and Hacker just to get a hold of these basics. Okay, so that we'll be comprising in a few slides and making it easy for you guys. And some Thing regarding the targeted therapy, immunotherapy, and the newer advances in oncology, which has been so much in vogue these days because recently it was published in the newspaper. I don't know whether you guys have gone through it or not that cancer can be cured with a single immunotherapeutic drug. Okay, so it was widely publicized in the newspapers that colorectal cancer can be cured and it was due to a immunotherapy drug. Okay, so all these things will be simplifying for you guys so that you can just brush up before your exam. Okay, so now coming to the obstetrics, we will be covering the basics of reproduction, placenta, labor, maternal pelvis, uh, uh, operative vaginal delivery, abortion, early pregnancy, module ectopic pregnancy, various medical disorders of pregnancy, the prenatal screening part, which is very important where repeatedly you get questions from the prenatal screening part. And coming to the gynae part, we'll be covering the anatomy, physiology, disorders of menstruation, menopause, HRT, frequently asked topic in the need assess exam regarding the PID contraception. Contraception, you can expect at, at least two or three questions from the topic of contraception. Then coming to VT thromboprophylaxis, usually they follow the ACOG guidelines as uh, far as thromboprophylaxis is concerned. 
then coming to eras which is a well talked about topic nowadays okay so you can expect one question from the eras protocol which we will be discussing in our gynecology session then uh, mis and robotics robotics is very much in a recent uh, advance which uh, we at tata we usually do robotic surgery nowadays uh, then the urogyne uh, urogyne model now coming to reproductive medicine we have female reproductive endocrinology overview of female infertility endometriosis you can expect at least five questions from endometriosis uh, then pcod this is a very frequently asked topic at least five questions from pcod to be sure amenorrhea again a frequently asked question hirsutism male reproductive endocrinology male infertility erection ejaculation the whole of the andrology part then evaluation how to evaluate an infertile couple unexplained infertility imaging and infertility reproductive surgery iui ovulation induction third party reproduction ethics in art cryopreservation and embryo quality and the various drugs in use and pre implantation genetic diagnosis so who are the mentors uh, i am upasna and i am doing my super speciality in gynae onco at uh, tata medical center i had a neat assess rank of 7 in 2020 with a fifth overall rank in gynae onco and second overall rank in reproductive medicine i have done my mrcog and i am a member of royal college of obstetrics and gynae and a few of the leading international gynae societies namely igcs sgo asgo and agoi that is the indian uh, gynae onco society and i am specially interested in hypec in ovarian cancer and minimally invasive surgery we will be talking about what is hypec this is also a very upcoming field in gynae onco and i hope to see you all a member of this renowned society is once you enter the stream of gynae onco uh, then we have dr navya she is a consultant in fetal maternal medicine at bengaluru and she has done her fnmf for uk certified for fetal anomaly and you know nt scan she is a secretary of ksoga genetics and fetal medicine committee and has been a mentor at study medic for several years she has done her fnb in high risk pregnancy and fetal medicine so both of us we have been through what you guys are being through so we can very well understand what you, you are going through and we will be giving you a uh, uh, we will be trying to help you as much as we can through your course for this neat assess and we do want you to see as successful candidates for for this exam okay so a few words regarding study medic group so study medic has been providing uh, this online and live training for various courses namely mrcog mrcpi fcps epgog mrcs frcs md ms dnb and dgo exams and uh, they are doing it for quite some time now so they are pioneers in this stream so why join us because we do help you plan and schedule before your exam we do tell you what to read because it is always quite confusing and uh, actually medical science is vast and there are so many things to read so it is only 39 days before the exam and you should know what you are reading trust me within this 39 weeks can make a difference and you can have achieve success within this 39 days if you know what to read and if you uh read in a in a oriented and in a specified manner okay so you should read smart that is the key word you should know what how to read what to read and you should know how to manage your time because 150 questions in 150 minutes please keep that in mind you need to practice every day you need to practice at least 100 mcqs try and sit down for try and make it a habit 100 minutes 100 mcqs okay so this is how you will improve your pace or you can even target about around 100 mcqs if there are one liner mcqs maybe 100 mcqs in a span of 60 minutes so that will if help in case you get two or three liners but mostly the exam will comprise of one liner questions 
will help you reducing stress by giving you providing you this daily quotes and daily motivational quotes okay so this is the reason so for choosing us so this is our upcoming course as i already told you it is a two weeks course and we'll be starting from august 1st that is we'll have be having our first session on august 2nd that is the introduction session and uh, we have a launch offer of 7500 rupees as time is so short and we are launching for the first time it is around 7500 we are also coming with this neat assess mega box where you will be giving a all india you will be given an all india ranking and we will be taking four mega mocks where you will be giving an all india rank will be provided to you and it will be based on the neat assess pattern that is 150 questions in 150 minutes and it will be simulating the real exam so you can also enroll for this neat assess mega mocks in case you want to enroll only for our mock test and in case you want to enroll for our course then this mega mock will you will be able to uh, go the you will be able to apply for the mocks free of cost okay so this is the mega mocks is included in our course and in case someone doesn't want to enroll in the course they can enroll in our mega mocks separately okay so you can enroll either for the four uh, four mega mocks or you can uh, enroll for single mega mock at around 750 rupees and the four mega mocks are around 2000 rupees uh, i think uh, dr navya is here hello dr navya are you here hi dr upasana hi hi so is there something uh, you would like to address the, the students yeah she is our other mentor dr navya uh, hi everyone so i think uh, we have all realized now that uh, most of us have started looking beyond our uh, post graduation in msog uh so it's long back uh, since uh, we always thought that uh, uh, the og is an evergreen and an end branch so there have uh, all these super specialties like gynec onco reproductive medicine and fetal medicine have cropped up and uh, uh, i just uh, when i uh, went through fnb uh, it was uh, just like an experimentation but now i think it has become a, uh, almost like an essential uh, part especially if you are planning to uh, you know establish yourself in a big city and after doing my fnb definitely the efforts were worth it uh, i did my fnb from simar kerala i was very lucky that it was a very uh, well established fetal medicine department where i got a good exposure in fetal medicine and high risk obstetrics and i went uh, when i came back to bangalore to practice it has been a great advantage for me uh, when uh, there was a time that i needed to take a break from og i have practiced only fetal medicine and for a major part of my career i have practiced both fetal medicine and general obstetrics and gynecology so i think uh, you all have made the right decision by even started uh, start thinking about uh, uh, doing a super specialty course all the best and um, dr upasana uh, has done a great job by organizing um, this course uh, i think uh, through her uh, we can see her work she is a recent pass out i passed long back in 2017 i gave my fnb i think she is a fresh pass out and i have been following her work for the past 2 to 3 weeks and i think she is a great organizer i am happy to be a part of her team uh, and uh, also we should give due credit credit to steady medic it has come up with such an organized course and they are behind us to make uh, a best quotes for all of you i hope this is uh, uh, this will be useful uh, for your endeavor yeah thank you thank you dr navya uh, dr navya has told a very pertinent point the need of super specialty in ob gyn okay so i didn't uh, touch on this point but dr navya thanks for reminding yeah the need of sub, sub specialty in ob gyn is really important you will realize this when this will be now in fact now all my juniors they are asking me regarding this need super specialty exam so this is something trust me guys 10 years from now you will see everyone from obgyn 
appearing for neat super speciality okay so trust me on this as it has become a habit that all the medicine people they are giving this uh, sub speciality and after medicine after clearing your md in medicine you are either a cardiologist or an endocrinologist or rheumatologist similarly in ob gyn also you will be needing to, uh, you will be either a gynae oncologist or a reproductive or a high risk pregnancy and fetal medicine expert okay or and there is another upcoming branch that is uro gynecology where they are starting up with fellowship courses and soon they'll be starting with the subspeciality courses also okay so this is an upcoming thing and this is really important and the earlier you do the earlier you finish and the better fruits you reap okay uh, so i think we have dr somia with us uh, she is the ceo of the study medic uh, team so dr somia can you just address uh, the participants hello uh hi hi upasan actually i was carrying on hi. with the uh, oh sorry uh, <laughs> sorry uh, yeah. yeah, just, maybe that's okay yeah. So uh, yes. guys, thank you so much. Uh, and I have seen Basana before as a faculty mentor, but the amount of enthusiasm and the zeal what Basana has today is <laughs> I can see how much she loves the needlessness. Okay, so definitely uh, they have been doing this for quite some time, and it is something which, as Upasana rightly said, this is something, guys. Uh, like I would say, anything you read to become more and more perfect and more and more fine tuned. that will always take you to a greater heights and i do agree now people really do not want to stick to be an obstetrician or a gynecologist just they want to be something else so that they can show their potential and of course uh, i don't think person i need it would uh, require 10 years or so probably in another 3 4 years because in present generation they would if you can see they want to do all the fellowships all the memberships together so i'm sure this would be a very very i would say fast growing uh, exam so it's a good idea for whoever has already decided and joined with us that's really wonderful to see you guys are already thinking so much ahead and yes and now we are upasana have done a great work of course uh, we are behind them to give the quality one because that's what study medic stands for and i know most of the students are our own students so that's again something which you know already the system how it works and you know the quality and of course uh, this is a short course but i'm sure this must be enough for you guys to crack a seat okay because they have these beautiful mocks and also the course is well planned even though it's a very smaller or a shorter course and you know that it will be more focused nearing the exams so i wish all the very best to everyone whoever is going to take the exam and thank you pastor and navya for the wonderful efforts of yours to put people on the right track and of course study medic would always be there for any quality work and anybody to help them achieve their dreams thank you pasana thank you for letting me speak thank you so much thank you thank you so much thank you dr somya thank you thanks for letting us have this platform thank you thank you so much uh, so we'll just move ahead with a brief uh, overview regarding what is post menopausal bleeding and endometrial cancer so post menopausal bleeding i did include this topic uh, because there have been see, uh, significant recent changes and advances from this topic where from where you can expect a good number of questions so okay so i'll just give you a brief overview regarding what is post menopausal bleeding you all know what is post menopausal bleeding what is menopause menopause is uh, when you have amenorrhea for around a period of 1 year so after you have a post menopausal bleeding you do what is the first investigation that you give ask the patient to do that is an endometrial thickness on the ultrasound so if it is less than 4 mm then and if uh, uh and if there are risk factors that is it's an older age group and uh, they have an irregular uh, endometrial thickness or there is fluid in the cavity fluid in the endometrial cavity which is suggestive of either hematometra or pyometra then it may need endometrial sampling so this has been an exam tested question okay so i'll be telling you the exam tested questions as i go on with the session so there was a question that uh, a lady comes to you and she has fluid in the cavity what will be your next step the answer is endometrial sampling okay fluid in the endometrial cavity in a postmenopausal lady with postmenopausal bleeding though her endometrial thickness is less than 4 mm may suggest cancer 
So you have to do an endometrial biopsy in her case. This was an exam tested question. Okay, it came in on my AIM super specialty exam. Okay, so now if the endometrial thickness is more than four millimeter, then you need to do an endometrial sampling with or without hysteroscopy. So when do you do hysteroscopy? Can anyone unmute or can anyone just write it down in the chat box maybe? When do we do a hysteroscopy? In a case of postmenopausal bleeding? Hello? You can type it down. Okay, irregular ET. Okay, anything specific? Okay, very good. Cervical stenosis or polyp. Okay. Insufficient sample. Good. Any polyp. Exactly, any polyp. Okay, any polyp or if you see any focal lesion and you have a high index of suspicion and you have done an endometrial sampling, it has either come out to be insufficient or you have either you have got a negative sample, but you have a high index of suspicion and there is a focal lesion on the ultrasonography, then you may need to do a hysteroscopy before ruling out endometrial cancer, okay? So either if you get an insufficient sample, then you need to do a hysteroscopy. And if it is sufficient sampling, so whatever the pathology report tells you, whether it is hypoplasia or carcinoma, accordingly, you will manage, okay? So, and in case of recurrent postmenopausal bleeding and a negative biopsy on the endometrial sampling, still then you may need to do a hysteroscopy. So these are few of the indications of hysteroscopy. Now coming to endometrial hyperplasia. This is the flowchart taken directly from the Berek book. Okay, Berek and Hacker. So in what is the management of endometrial hypoplasia in case the patient wants to preserve her uterus? In case there is no desire to retain the uterus, you can straightforward go for a hysterectomy in case it is atypical hyperplasia. Nowadays, hypoplasia is classified into, WHO has classified into endometrial hypoplasia with or without atypia. So there are only two classification. Earlier, it was a four classification. That is simple hyperplasia, complex hyperplasia, simple hyperplasia with atypia, complex hyperplasia with atypia. So, but this has been revised in this uh, WHO. So, if the uh, woman has a desire to retain the uterus, you need to give her on progesterone. You need to keep her on progesterone. That is, you can give either. Uh, Dipoprovera or, or, uh, or progesterone tablets, that is a medroxyprogesterone acetate 10 to 20 milligram per day for 10 to 14 days a month or a levonorgestrel IUD. And uh, you need to repeat the endometrial biopsy in three to six months of time. This is very important. The time period is three to six months. This has also been asked in your exam. So in case you find persistent hyperplasia, uh, in case you find persistent hyperplasia, then you need to keep her on the trial of high dose. However, you need to increase the dose to 100 to 200 milligram per day for three months and with or without levonorgestrel IUCD. And if there is still persistent hyperplasia, so after a period of around six months, if you still find persistent hyperplasia, here you need to go for hysterectomy. Okay, you can no longer keep the woman in observation, though she has a desire to retain the uterus. You need to counsel the woman regarding, regarding the need to do a hysterectomy. Okay, so this very question was asked in the exam that a lady comes to you with uh, an atypical endometrial hyperplasia. However, she is an alipera and 30 year old. You have kept her on Dipoprovera for six months. Now, uh, however, her biopsy shows persistent hyperplasia. So what will be your next plan of action? So the next plan of action in case she has a twice repeat biopsy, endometrial biopsy showing persistent hyperplasia, it has to be hysterectomy. However, if she had only one repeat biopsy, then you have to increase the dose of progestin 
and repeat a biopsy after three months. Okay, so this is the catch in the question. So either of you can uh, be asked a question from this level, or you can be asked a question at this level. Okay, so both the things can be asked. However, we were asked a question from this level where it was persistent hyperplasia after two subsequent endometrial biopsies. So when you have to counsel the women for hysterectomy. Hope I am clear. However, if the woman has normal or atrophic endometrium after three months of endo, after three months of uh, progesterone uh, tablets, then she can continue Provera five milligram per day for ten days and an annual transvaginal ultrasound. However, she have to be on follow up and do an annual transvaginal ultrasound, and you can send her for ovulation induction once she conceives you should advise her for hysterectomy. Okay, so this is a brief overview regarding endometrial hyperplasia and the related exam tested questions. Here, this is a flow table with the dosage because these dosages are asked. So in case it is medroxyprogesterone, it is 10 to 20. And in case it is LNG IUS, which we usually use, it is 52 milligram, which can be kept over for five years. And depot metroxyprogesterone is 150 milligram IM and magistral acetate is around 160 to 200 milligram per day. Usually we use metroxyprogesterone acetate or LNG IUV. In our setup, we usually use LNG intrauterine system. And this is the RCOG flow chart. This is a very important algorithm for you to remember for endometrial hyperplasia. Just looking at this uh, algorithm, you can go to the exam and nothing else, just addressing the risk factors, observation in case it is without high uh, atypia, you can uh, uh, do an endometrial biopsy. For endometrial hyperplasia, it has to be done at six months interval because here, you can relatively wait. However, if it is atypical hyperplasia, it has to be done at three months of interval. And uh, here you have to see whether it is regressing. In case it is regressing, then you can wait. In case it is persisting, then uh, you have to advise a TH VSO. And in case it is progressing, then still you need to advise for a total abdominal hysterectomy. Okay. So this is the RCOG guidelines. Now coming to the classification of endometrial cancer. This is very important. Uh, this is the Bockham classification. This is the earlier classification which we used to use in endometrial cancer. That is the type 1 and the type 2 cancer. Type 1 is the endometroid variety. Type 2 is the serous and clear cell variety. Grade Grade 1 and 2, these are low-grade varieties. And usually type 2, these are all necessarily high-grade. So they are more aggressive. Naturally, anything which is high grade is more aggressive. Uh, I don't know why people are joining now so late. Anyways, uh, we are almost through the session. So type 1, it is endometrioid. Type 2 is serous and clear cell. Grading is grade 1 and 2. Type 2 is grade 3. Prognosis is favorable for type 1. Naturally, because they are low grade, it is favorable. It is non-aggressive. Usually, it is diagnosed at an earlier stage. It is positive for receptor. Anything which is very favorable or aggressive and has a good prognosis, they are usually positive for receptor. That is, they are uh, estrogen and re progesterone receptor positive. Okay, So they arise from a background of hypoplasia and usually they seldom metastasize as you, it's evident from the clinical staging of one and two. And the myometrial invasion is usually less than half. And they are usually very sensitive to hormonal therapies. That is, they are susceptible to medical treatment also. However, for type 2, these are the poorer varieties and the highly aggressive types. So they are usually high grade naturally. They are poor, pro, they have a poor prognosis, aggressive variety. The stage usually diagnosed at in, okay, around stage 3 or 4. A woman comes to you with abdominal distension and ascites. Okay, so she can very well have a serous endometrial variety of cancer. They are usually hormone receptor negative and they arise in a background of atrophic endometrium. This is a frequently asked question. Okay, uh, where well, that uh, which of this is not a feature for type 2 endometrial cancer? So they will give you serous, clear cell, poor, they will give you a rise in a background of hypoplasia. So a rise in a background of hypoplasia is the incorrect option okay so this table is very important as this has been asked number of times in the past exams regarding the difference between type 1 and type 2 
endometrium. So in type 2 endometrial cancer, uh, usually they have frequent metastasis and have deep myometrial invasion and they are not sensitive to hormonal therapy. Now coming to the molecular classification, that is the TCGA classification. This is specifically the reason why I included this topic in today's discussion, because I wanted all of you, uh, those who are appearing for NEED super specialty exam to have an idea regarding this molecular classification, because this is a very recent topic, which has yet to come into the textbooks also. This is the, the several trials are going on, namely the transportec and the portec 4A trials. And this is yet to be incorporated fully in, into, our, more, into our standard textbooks. However, we had an exam tested question from this very topic. Okay, so I just, that is the precisely the reason why I included this endometrial cancer topic for today's session. So the molecular classification of endometrial cancer, that is the TCGA atlas, okay, the atlas classification, it classifies endometrial cancer now into four classes. There are four classes, that is one is Paul E, the second is MSI, third is copy number low and fourth is copy number high. These are the four classes, okay, the, which you need to remember. So what is Paul E? Paul E are ultra mutated malignancies. What are the hallmark? The hallmark are mutations in the exonuclease domain of poly, that is the polymerase E enzyme, okay, which a Paul E encodes for the catalytic subunit of DNA polymerase epsilon, which plays a relevant role in DNA repair. So you just no need to, uh, no need to be afraid. What are these? Uh, maybe you are listening for the first time all these words, but maybe you are hearing it for the first time. So uh, just remember Paul E. This is the class which has the best prognosis okay so this is the class which has the highest number of mutations so it is the ultra mutated group and this is the class which which has the best prognosis then coming to the msi high these are the tumors which have a high rate of mutation they are not as frequently mutated as the poly variety however they also harbor a high rate of mutations resulting from the impaired dna mmr pathway so what is a, uh, uh, the most commonly implicated genes in the MSI high group are MLH1, MSH2, MSH6, and PMS2. Please remember these four genes because you may be asked, you may be given an option, four options, and it will be asked which of these is not a gene incorporated within the MSI high group. So if you remember these three or four, you can pick up the odd one out. Okay, so this is a table table, which I'll just simplify it for you, which you should remember before your exam, please go through this table before your exam, because please expect a question from this or topic, because this is a frequently asked topic and the premier institutes, as I mentioned, who set the question paper that is CMC Velour or AIMS or Safdarjan, they have or they have started doing this molecular classification of endometrial cancer. This is now being routinely done. However, this is yet to come into our standard textbooks. So please go through this. Okay, you can expect at least two or three questions from this topic. So what is the Paul E mutated variety? The Paul E mutated variety, as I told you, they are the frequently mutated variety. They have a very high number of mutation that is more than 100 mutation, the most highly mutated variety. And however, the prevalence, this has the lowest prevalence among the four varieties. So there are four varieties, poly, DMMR, that is the MSI. Another is the non-specific type, that is the copy number low. And the fourth one is the copy number high or the P53 variety. Okay, so the lowest incidence is poly, highest mutation rate is poly. And what are the varieties associated with poly? They are the endometrioid varieties, often hybrid. The associated features are, they have a low BMI, they are early stage and early in onset, because I already told you these have the most favorable prognosis, excellent prognosis. How can you detect poly? You can detect poly on NGS or Sanger sequencing or a hotspot mutation. So these are the three diagnostic tests for detection of poly. Okay. Now coming to the DMMR, these are the hypermutated variety. 
poly was ultra mutated dmmr is hyper mutated that means they also have a high number of mutations but not as much as the poly they have they are usually endometroid type and have a melf type invasion please remember this word melf type invasion they are associated with lynch syndrome and obesity and these are the genes which i told you mlh1 msh2 msh6 and pms2 what is the diagnostic test you can detect this by immunohistochemistry which we routinely do in our endometrial biopsy specimens where by running a ihc panel you can detect this genes or you can detect it from the blood by doing an msi assay the prognosis is intermediate in this variety okay now coming to the non specific variety these have a very low mutation burden and uh, these account these are the most frequently prevalent so you can have several mcqs from this topic which is the most frequently prevalent which is the least frequently prevalent which is the ultra mutated variety which is the hyper mutated variety which variety is associated with lynch syndrome etc so this table accounts for around 10 or 15 odd questions okay so however they have an intermediate prognosis now coming to the p53 variety which has the poorest of the prognosis the most bad or the most lethal among all is the p53 variety it has a very low mutation burden it is very low mutated the one which has the highest rate of mutation is the most favorable one that is the poly variety and it has all the histological subtypes and mostly they are high grade as i already mentioned the high grade means the low prognosis so they are usually associated with a lower bmi we always know that endometrial cancer is associated with a higher bmi however you should remember that obese women have a very good prognosis as compared to non obese women in endometrial cancer because obese women they usually have an endometrioid variety of a cancer and they are associated with favorable mutations and they are detected early at an earlier stage so hence they are amenable to cure however the non obese or the, those with an atrophic background they are usually more, mostly the serous variety and they are detected late at a late onset and they have the poorest variety so uh, can anyone tell me uh, which among these four subgroups have the highest frequency of mutations please type in the chat book which among this four subgroups has the highest among number of mutations very good poly exactly good so i think it's clear now this was my exam tested question okay so poly is the highest one so i think it's clear another upcoming thing in endometrial cancer is sentinel lymph node okay so sentinel lymph node it started from parotid cancer penile cancer malignant melanoma as we all know so this i have included because they can ask you which among the following cancers uh, have uh, has have you done a sentinel node or is associated with a sentinel node biopsy so apart from these cancers if they give you any other cancer it is not usually associated with sentinel lymph node in cervical cancer we have started but still it is at a nascent stage in vulval cancer and in endometrial cancer it is starting uh, it is being established nowadays okay so this is the sentinel node pathway usually this is the upper para cervical pathway that is this is the most commonly uh, followed route that is uh, to the medial external iliac and the obturator nodes this is the lower para cervical pathway where you go it goes to the presacral lymph node and it follows the internal iliac lymph nodes then this is the infundibular pathway which is the less least common pathway so here it goes it follows it goes it travels via the infundibular pelvic ligament and directly goes to the paraortic area okay so the most commonly followed pathway is the upper para cervical pathway where it drains into the external iliac lymph node and the obturator lymph node this is a well talked about algorithm that is the mskcc sentinel node algorithm where 
after taking uh, the peritoneal washings and doing a complete abdominal evaluation, you do a retroperitoneal evaluation. You excise all the mapped sentinel nodes associated with ultra staging and any suspicious nodes. However, you should be removed regardless of the mapping. Even if they are not mapped on the sentinel node, you need to remove the suspicious nodes in case you find them enlarged. That has to be removed. In case there is no mapping on a hemipelvis, you need to do a site-specific lymphadenectomy. This is very important. So they can give you a scenario where they will tell you that you have injected a ICG, that is endocyanin green dye, and you are doing a sentinel node. However, there is no mapping on a hemipelvis. So what will be your next step? So what is the answer? What will you do in case there is no mapping of sentinel node? On a hemi pelvis, what is the next step? Yes, site specific lymph node. That is, if you are not getting any sentinel node on the right side, then you will do a complete right pelvic lymphadenectomy. Am I clear? I think I'm clear. Okay, so in case there is no mapping of sentinel node on the left side, then you will do a complete left sided lymphadenectomy. Okay. So this is all about sentinel lymph node. This is sentinel lymph node pathology ultrasound staging. So first, the sentinel lymph nodes are examined by hemato hematoxylin and eosin stain. So in case it is positive, then no need to go any further because you already know that the sentinel node is positive and you have got a positive node. So that makes your staging, it is upgraded. So what does uh, positive lymph node means? It gives a stage of? What is the endometrial staging that you will assign in case the sentinel nodes are positive? 3C, very good, good, yes. So you can expect a number of questions from staging. You should be, staging should be at your fingertips, okay? Staging, we had a number of questions from staging and I'm sure this year also it will have a number of questions from your staging. Don't worry, we will be, uh, every day we'll be revising staging so that it will be on your fingertips, okay? So in case the hema HE staining is negative, then you need to do a sentinel node ultra staging. So how is a sentinel node ultra staging done? It is done by doing cutting two adjacent five micrometer sections. The thing is five uh, micrometer sections. Uh, the section is of five micrometers, uh, my five micrometer, and at fifty micrometer apart. Okay, and these are stained for the anti-cytokeratin that is AE1 is to AE3 for a total of five slides. So we are taking five slides per block, five micrometer and at 50 micrometer apart. And then we are doing the staining. So what is macrometastasis? Can anyone answer what is macrometastasis? What is the size of the tumor in case it is a macrometastasis? This has been incorporated into the FIGO recently for the cervical cancer for and the rest of the cancers. So this can be very well asked in your exam. So what is macrometastasis? Okay, so macrometastasis is when your tumor size is greater than two millimeter in diameter. In case it is greater than two millimeter, that is macrometastasis. In case it is between 0.2 to two millimeter in diameter, it is known as micrometastasis. And what is isolated tumor cell? Isolated tumor cell is when it is less than 0.2 millimeter or it is less than 200 cells. Please remember, less than 0.2 millimeter or less than 200 cells. Okay, so this is also a recent topic and can be asked in your exam. Macrometastasis, micrometastasis, isolated tumor cells. Okay. So in case it is, it has either micrometastasis or macrometastasis, it increases your staging. That is, you will give a stage of 3C, depending 3C1 or 2, depending whether it is a pelvic lymph node or a paraortic lymph node. However, if you get an isolated tumor cell, they do not change your staging. The P will be PN0. However, in the bracket, you will have to write I+. Plus. Okay, so you have to remember that isolated tumor cells do not change your staging. Okay, so please remember these uh, things which I told you. 
because these are some of the recent and advanced topics and i thought i should share it with all of you before your exams as they may be asked in your exams and may help you all okay we all want you to succeed in your exam and just come and maybe and to see you uh, with flying colors the other side of the exams okay so that you can be all gynecology oncologist or reproductive medicine specialist whatever you want to be okay so these are some of the questions i have uh, assembled Uh, so that we can have a brainstorming session so which among these endometrial cancer subtypes has the worst prognosis you can just type your answers yes uh, copy number high or serious like okay anyone else with the answers hello Okay, Madhu Mati says B. Okay, so you need to be quick. Yes, the answer is B. Copy number high or serious like, and it has around fifty percent five year survival in localized disease. This is the data from the tra transportic trial, which is yet to be published in our standard textbooks. It is just an ongoing trial. Okay, so you can very well expect a question from this and. Uh, i think there was some confusion regarding to the timing because uh, people are joining so late hello uh, sorry we are towards the end of the session anyways this is the second question can i have the answers 61 year old post menopausal women on continuous combined hrt for 5 years uh, presents complaining of vaginal bleeding which of the following is the most appropriate next step in her management yeah i need the answers quick you have to be quick okay analyse uh, she tells me c you have to be quick guys okay ultrasonography i have another answer anyone else we have only two answers what are the rest of you doing hello You need to type down the answers. Okay, so the answer is endometrial biopsy. So the question is, which of the following is the most appropriate next step in her management? Okay. most appropriate see you have to be very careful regarding what are the what is asked for you okay these all confusing questions will be asked in your exam and you have to be you have to read the question carefully so which of the following is the most appropriate next step so whenever a postmenopausal woman comes to you who has been in hrt complaining of postmenopausal bleeding so the first first important thing which you need to rule out is endometrial cancer okay whether she is has she has she has been on hormones so she may very well have endometrial cancer so in such a case you need to rule out endometrial cancer and only endometrial biopsy is around 95% specific and sensitive in ruling out endometrial cancer in case the question would have asked what what would be your first investigation okay then maybe the answer would have been pelvic ultrasound however the question asks most appropriate most appropriate when the question is regarding most appropriate the answer is endometrial biopsy because this is the only modality which will rule out endometrial cancer conclusively okay so i hope uh, it's clear why when the answer will be pelvic ultrasound if the question asks which is the first line investigation then the answer is b and if the question asks which of the following is the most appropriate step then the answer is endometrial biopsy hope i am clear this is specifically the reason why i included this because this question is frequently asked and you tend to do mistakes in this question and as i already told you you cannot lose out even a single mark in this exam because this is highly competitive owing to the less number of seats okay 
Uh, now coming to number question number three. What proportion of women with menopausal bleeding have endometrial cancer? Come on. Okay. D, very good. Very good. Okay, very good. Perfect. So every one of us agree that it is 10%. Okay, so 10% is the proportion of bleeding. This is a very easy question, but frequently asked. Okay, so these questions should be on your fingertips and you will hardly take around 10 seconds to answer them. Okay, so that will give you an edge above others. Now, 59-year-old lady who underwent a robotic hysterectomy with pelvic and paraortic lymphadenopathy has a histopathology report of stage 1B endometrial serous carcinoma. So what is an appropriate adjuvant therapy for her? Vaginal brachy, chemotherapy, external beam radiotherapy, chemotherapy, and external beam radiotherapy, that is EBRT. Okay, again, Annalise, she tells me C. Gillian says A. Any more answers? Serous. Yeah, serous. Yeah, it is serous. So what should be the answer? It is serous 1B. I'm still waiting for the correct answer. It's neither A, it's neither... Okay, someone tells me D. Okay, anyone else? Uh, I think people were confused regarding the timing. I don't know, it's around 9.25. We had the session at 8 o'clock. I think there was some confusion regarding the timing. Anyways. So we are towards the end of our session. Okay, so the answer is D. Very well. Okay, doctor. It was Dr. Shrikant. Yes. So very well. Yeah, it is chemotherapy and ABRT. Okay, so because it is a serous endometrium. In a case of a serous endometrium, even if it is 1B or 1A2, uh, please mute yourself. Yes, serous and clear cell do require chemo and as well as ABRT. Very good. Yes, this is according to the ESGO Astro consensus, which has been recently published in 2021. Even if the earlier ESGO guideline also did recommend a chemotherapy and ABRT. Okay, so we need to give a chemotherapy and EBRT for this endometrial serous carcinoma, even if it is 1B, even if in an early stage, okay? So we will discuss in detail regarding the management of EBRT. I will, uh, I will uh, try and compress it into a single slide so as to make it easy for you guys, okay? Because you can expect one question from the management part, okay? So this is all uh, regarding the... Need assess. So I wish you all the best for your preparation. And I hope to see all of you as gynae super specialists. And we are here to help you in whatever doubts and whatever efforts you want, whatever thing you want, and whatever doubts you have. And in helping for your preparation. So now, any questions you have for me? Anything, anything regarding to the course, regarding to the exam, or regarding to the whatever we discussed, anything which I can help you with. Uh, some of you have joined late anyways. So any one of you has any questions to ask, please unmute yourself and answer. Please ask. Or you can type it in the chat box. Okay, MCQ book, <laughs> which one to refer? This is a very difficult question, Dr. Shrikan. Uh, there has been no such uh, MCQ books which is oriented towards need super speciality in particular. Okay, uh, you can refer to um, your uh, Sakshi Arora. That is the book which we have been doing from time immemorial. Okay, we have been doing that uh, MCQ books, uh, Sakshi Arora. But uh, you have to be careful regarding the mistakes in Sakshi Arora. So Sakshi Arora, there has been, there are quite a few number of uh, errors in the answers. Okay, maybe the answers are wrong, but the explanation is right. So you have to be 
very vigilant regarding the answers in Sakshi Arora because there are quite a few number of uh, questions in the Gaineonko as well as in the Repromed part when I had uh, uh, gone through the book. So you have to be vigilant regarding the answers. Okay. Otherwise, you can practice from Sakshi Arora. However, there is a dearth of MCQ books for need assess OB gain as far as OB gain is concerned. Okay. Uh, when will the course start? Okay, so when will the course start? As I already mentioned, the course will start on August 2. And we'll be having our introductory session on 2nd of August. And we will be having our first class on maybe around 4th or 4th or 5th of August. Okay, so there will be six classes total. Uh, one introductory session four classes covering the four modules. One is gyne onco, one is gyne or obstetrics, and one is your reproductive medicine. And one a session we will have only on exam tested MCQs, where we will be discussing the MCQs which has been asked in the past few years of exam. Yeah, duration of the class will be around two to three hours because we will be covering one module in one session okay because we have already 39 days left and we will be giving you a directed and a focused approach which you will be needing 39 days before your exam uh, which will help you clear the exam so we will be having the session for around two to three hours okay the session will be around two to three hours for more details yes you can contact at this number uh, they'll be contacting you Okay, so uh, any more questions or should we call it a day? Okay, I think... Uh, Okay, thank you. Thank you. It was lovely interacting with you guys and you guys are really well prepared. Hope to see you soon as we test uh, successes and uh, hope you clear your exams well. Okay, so thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. All the best for your exams.